Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Today, I want us to go and look into our Christian life. Go and look into your Christian life. Is your Christian life right with God? Is your Christian life on the right track with what God is saying? Are they moving hand in hand or together? Are you going to where God said you are supposed to go? What I've learned is most of us, when we come to the house of the Lord, we come because there is something we are searching for. We come because we are sick. We come because we have problems. We come because things are not going the way we were thinking they will go. And then we run going to the house of the Lord. And after some time, after a few months, two, three months, whatever that you have been crying for, come to your hands. Maybe you were crying for money, then money comes. Maybe you wanted a job, then the job come, comes. And maybe you were searching for marriage, and marriage come. Then after all these things, you have found them. What is it that we do? We run back to where we come from. And where we come from is not a church. We go back to our old ways. Kanti, when God saved us, I was reading the Bible, I heard it from the Bible, it says, Unyaka uribadi chava vate vamutumishe. Kaburina. God wants people of the nations to come and worship him through them seeing us. Now, when we are Christians living in this road, like walking each and every day, coming to Sunday, some of us we will even explain it and give it a good explanation and say, Mama, it's long I've been here in the church, but nothing. It's happening to me. Let me redirect you today and tell you you are making a mistake. There is a lot of things that are happening in your life as long as your heart is here. There is a lot of things that happens in our lives as long as me and my body and my heart we are here in the house of the Lord. Every Sunday when we come to the house of the Lord to worship, there is something that God, there is a tick that God will take out of us. And God will take it out. And when you go home, you will be free. Now the problem is, or the dilemma is, when we come to the house of the Lord as children of God, we go there with expectations. We go there expecting that God is going to change our things overnight. In two weeks, my things will be changed. In three weeks, I'll be this and I'll be that. In four weeks, I'll be this and I'll be that. It does not go that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there is nothing that is going to work in your life if you don't work towards it so that it can start working in you. You can never be called a doctor of medicine. If you're never going to... And you learn to become a medical doctor, then when you come back after graduating, after wearing those beautiful gowns, they say, now you are Dr. Green. Because you can now, when you are called Dr. Green, you have the mandate to go and see people of God and treat them of their diseases and their sicknesses and what, what, and what, what. 
When we come to Christianity, people don't want to go through the school of being Christians so that they can become true Christians. The Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, yes. But for you to get that kind of blessings, you must work. Eh? You must do what? You cannot wake up early in the morning one day and find a million dollar place on top of your musamero. It cannot be. You must work for it. That is why I said today, I want us to speak about our Christian life. Can you ask the person that is close to you, where are you going with this Christianity? Can you ask again, where are you going with, with this Christianity? Each and every one of us here, you have to intro Respect your own Christian life. When we come to Christianity, there is no inspector. There is no surgeon. There is no doctor. You intro yourself. You sit down and you think about everything that is happening close to you. And what is it that you are thinking of doing because of one, two, three that is happening close to your life. Now, I want us to go and look at the lives of the children of Israel. Let us go to the book of Exodus chapter 3. Ritlo Tomako verse 1, Rafitamula verse 10. Now Moses was tending the flock of Joth Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire. But the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. To him it was a miracle. Why the bush does not burn, whereas there is fire. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and Moses, and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites now therefore 
Behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Speak to us one by one. Help us, Lord, to understand what your word is saying to us today. Let your fire burn in our hearts as we listen to this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you a Christian? If you, you are not a Christian, better join Christians today. Okay. Where we have read, the Bible says Moses was tending to the flock of his father-in-law. And he was on the other side of the desert. Moshe was busy, you know, leading the flocks to greener pastures. And then I stood there when I was reading the Bible. I started asking myself, ah, I mean, if you are normal like me, what is it that Moses was doing on top of the mountain? That's point number one. And again, the Bible says, where Moses was, was on the other side. Hmm? of the desert. Come and show my way. In other words, Moses took the sheep or the flock of his father-in-law to a dry place. Am I right? Why? Because the Bible says and explains where he was, it was called Mount Horeb. And this Mount Horeb was called a mountain of God. Now in this mountain of God, Moses again go beyond on the other side. He went to a desert. And according to the understanding of me and you, we know that in a desert there is no grass. Am I right? Then it means, when I was reading the Bible, it means Moshemon like appointment. Moses was holding his appointment time. It was not Moses who made himself to be there at that point in time. It was God who persuaded Moses to come to the mountain of God at that point in time. Why? Because God wanted to speak with him. God wanted to give him a message that he will go and give it to the children of Israel. I believe most of the days Moses will go out with the flocks of his father-in-law and go somewhere else. But on that particular day, let me say on that Wednesday, I'm giving an example. On that Wednesday, Moses just chose to go to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. And on that same mountain of God, Moses met God. When Moses was there, the Bible says, he went on the other side where there was a desert and he was seeking food for the flocks of the father-in-law. This situation is very impossible. Or are you understanding it the way I'm understanding it? You cannot go and search for food in the desert. Eh? Eh? So now... When I was busy reading the Bible, then I come to an understanding. It means for you to find yourself in Charis Missionary Church today is your appointment to, with God so that God can be able to reach whatever that you are seeking for in your life. It's an appointed date where God plays an appointment with you so that he can be able to speak with you. Others, 
when they have been given appointments or appointment dates, they miss their appointments. And they come on a latter date. When the interview has finished already. Now, let me tell you. When you go to God on an appointed day, the thing that you are supposed to see there must be something that will make you to be amazed. When you go on the appointment day with the Lord, whatever that you are going to see, it will be something that is not usual but unusual. This man, when he reaches there, the bush started burning. Hardly, it's long he's been going around bushes. But a bush never bent, even in a single day. But on that appointment day, a bush started burning. When the bush was burning, my Bible says, I don't know what about yours, it says, Atomotsika melakatuko. So that he can see clearly what is going on. Why? Because the bush is burning. But the bush is not being consumed. So he wanted to be sure that when he goes home, he is going to tell the father-in-law, you know what? I saw something today. I saw a bush burning. But the branches were not being consumed. And when I go, go closer to see what is it that was happening, I believe Moshe was also going to try to extinguish the fire, to put the fire out. And Kerimawaya night was national fire. That's why Nalika, that's why he was trying to go on the other side to see what was going until the Lord spoke with him. Remember, the first thing that Moses did was going to the mountain of God. Number two, when he was in the mountain of God, he met God. He met God in the appointed time and date. So now, then God started speaking with him. Number three, God spoke with him. And God says to him, Moses, take off your shoes because the place where you are standing it's a holy place, it's holy ground. And Moses took off his sandals. After taking off his sandals, the message came, Moses, I have heard the cry of people in Winnie Mandela. Now it is time for me to send you to them. So that you can go and deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. Why? Because each day and each night when I want to rest, I hear only the cry of my people that are crying in Egypt. Now it is your time to go there and rescue them. What Kalu Moses is like Mamrut. But Father, I cannot speak. But Father, I'm slow in speech. But Father, when I go there, they will kill me. Remember, 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 I killed someone. So if I go back there, they are going to kill me. And God says, I will be with you. You are going to take your brother Aaron and go with him so that you can be able to tell the message to the king because I want my people to be free. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now the children of Israel, this time that we are living in, are like we Christians. Remember, it has been written in the book of Genesis, Abraham's blessings are ours. We serve the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of the God of everything. Now that's where our roots are. Ari tsetile rena le manganga mo pulusong re tsetile na mola. Now the Bible says, "Where Namusha, you Moses, 
you are going to the children of Israel and you are going to deliver them. I am going to walk with you. Why? Because I want my children to be free. I want them to come and worship me. I want them to come and serve me. Enough is enough for them to serve the Egyptians. And then Moses went and do according to what he has been told. If you can go and study nicely in your time, I won't read the whole of it because it's long. If you can go and study nicely, Moshe went to Pharaoh. When Moshe went to Pharaoh there, when he reached there, he explained the message he was given. I was sent by the God of Abraham. He said, let my people go. Hey. Instead of Pharaoh releasing the children of Israel, the burden that was upon them was doubled. It was said by the king, oh, you see these ones, they are starting to be lazy. Now they tell me they want to go and worship their God. Where, 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 where? No, no, no. Now they must make double the bricks they were making each and every day. And you must no longer serve them with straws to make bricks. Come on, trauma, where their job was doubled. They have to go find straws for themselves. And they must come back and make bricks again for themselves. When the day ends, they are very tired. To reach a land where there is milk and honey is not pap and fleece. Some of us, we think, because I've been born again two years ago, it means I must have reached already Canaan, the land of milk and honey. Uh-uh. But the problem that we are having today as Christians, we don't know how much it takes to reach the promised land. Can I repeat it? We don't understand how much it takes to reach the promised land. Bible Yakairi. You will go and read it. I believe it's chapter 7 there. Here it, Bible. Pharaoh, when he sees that these people are going to move out of his fingers not long, he increased the load of what they were doing. And the Bible says, please mark this that I'm going to say now. God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Limkilanker. Mudimadia ingi atata facha pili ya farao. Now, when the heart of Pharaoh is a hard and a hard stone, when they say things, he says his own. When he does things, he does his own. Why? Because God was purposefully doing that. Can you tell the person that it's God has a purpose? God has a purpose of doing that. We are at Sibaina. When Moses goes there with the Aaron, they're going there, they want to deliver the children of Israel. The God of Israel is saying, leave my people to go and worship me. And he said, who is this God? Apparently God told Moses that I am who I am. Now, he said, he is their God. God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whomever. Because the Bible started by saying, the person who knew about the God of the Israelites was dead. Huh? He was what? Dead. Now, this Pharaoh, this new one, does not know anything about God in heaven. That is why he is doing things the way he is doing them. Our God is a jealous God. I love that. 
The Bible says, Mudimwar Naki Mudimwo Wolelwa. We had Ziba Fita Unta Faro Abes Tempare Ba Skaba Dumel Ajika Sipil Bata Bobra Mushel Bobra Run Barakin Nakin Nakin Nahar Nikis Badia di Noa Badia Mitola Nikis Egas Honal. They will never go. Ogaragamona, I can see Moses going out, looking down. It was eight years, remember? Looking down like this. And when he was going, was going, he asked Aaron, what is it that we have to do? He said, nothing. There is nothing we can do. Let us go and speak with him. He is the one that will give us the answer. Let me tell you, child of God, this is a revelation that is coming to do you today. When the devil has placed a stamp on the heart of your enemy, it is time for you to go and seek what is it that God is saying because you will never make it on your own. Unalina kokara puluso wana bomma utoko kwa mudimu ribaringi If it needs me to go up on top of the mountain I will go If it needs me to go down the valley I will go Why because I just want to hear what God has to say The reason of God allowing the delay that you are having in your life today it is because he wants to prove who he is. Asita ba yauri ba loi ba na le mata. Kiana. Kita ba yauri papa udumechi. God has agreed that they do what they are doing on top of you. Why? Because he wants to prove to them that is God Almighty. That is God. He does not change. That is God. He does not eat porridge like men. What is happening in your life? It is not the plan of the enemy. Whatever you are coming across the road, it is not the plan of the enemy. No, the enemy is just involved because God has allowed him to enter into your matters. If God didn't want him to matter to enter, he was not going to enter. Now he has entered because God wants to show him. You know, God is leaving us in all these shameful situations. In all these bad things that we are coming across. It is not because, number one, you are not praying. It is not because, number two, you are not worshipping. It is not because, number three, you are not hearing what he's saying through his word. You are even trying to do what you cannot do. But still, there is a situation, there is a thorn in the flesh that is always pricking you. Let me tell you, child of God, God has allowed whatever that is happening in you. Let them laugh. Time of laughing, of stopping to laugh is coming. If God opens the door, nobody can close. If he say yes, nobody can say no. Uh -uh. Now people of Egypt, they thought they had it all. But it's very cool. I told my Jehovah work. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed you know, I love God because when he does his things, he wants nation to remember and recognize what he has done in your life. The situation that you are in today, it is not because God has forsaken you. The problem that you are in today, it is not because God has forsaken you. Mm. God has allowed everything to happen. Why? Because he trusts you and believes that you are going to stand tall and stand for the gospel of Christ and say, Jesus is Lord. I will never move from where I am. I will never shift from where I am. I am going to stand for the truth. 
le ba ka gore modimo tshepile and now, when you go and check it you will find or when god is still trusting us so much re nana pele re a tswa re a kekema le ampona re ke twane ba are to street re to wa o ka re re a boe re sa lebeletse pele mara re a tuwa when he comes back to check for us he does not find us there the time is his the way of doing things is his he is the one who decide when to bless you he is the one who knows when is it fit for you to receive what you are searching for now god want you to stay ma, in that situation so that ma key can acknowledge that you serve a big god now after the children of israel were released now after everything has happened king pharaoh said let the people go aksana mujali fa don't have an air anymore it means now i have to start afresh my air is gone my air is dead after a pass over night was passed or you must put blood come hang ambia on the doorpost so that the angel of death must pass if you don't put blood the angel will enter and kill your firstborn so there was a cry in egypt all the firstborns what end of what ever about to about up snanam tea there was nobody left and the king called for moses to come take your people and go and worship your god before bachitua can you tell the person that is before they went before they went away iri anga bibi na bona bachishwika ba bale ne ndi aifuna bibi ri anga bona iri god the god the same one the did the do one the same god who hardened the heart of pharaoh make the heart of pharaoh to be loose and he said go to my people and tell them they must go and ask for whatever they want my gemini they must go and ask for whatever they want uso ko shike ware ndi kombela 10000 dollars I'm speaking about my God. I don't know if you know about this thing. Ma, you know fitela re or le it's about 10,000 dollars was. Ke wona ke upela 10,000 dollars. Ra okay, okay. Just wait. I'm going to speak with Menier and I'm coming now now now. The Bible says modimo aba fabutu. Ngachi venda ita ashu chishu ya ba iri ba Israel ba chitwe gipita ba tangura igipita. Kuzibuka spiriti riki ba shakula ichipita. Kama njua mawe ichipita ya shala isna silu. Ba chia dilo cha kauta ba chia dilo cha silver. Kura ofita ruko upela seba no rigiya. Auri ke upela kumuje pedi ba no rigiya. Wajiya. How e ba no richi ya usipile in other words their presence was already irritating them they didn't want to see the israelites anymore why because their firstborns were dead the same god make the israelites to find favor in the eyes of the egyptians let me prophesy over you The problem that you are having today God has allowed it to happen in your life because why is going to give you favor upon your enemies tomorrow your tomorrow is going to shine your tomorrow is going to be visible there will be laughter in your house tomorrow there will be joy and speakable in your house tomorrow why because the same god that allowed you to be bonded in this bondage for many years he is about to open doors that nobody will be able to close that nobody will be able to shut that nobody will be able to say no yeah. 
Hallelujah. Now I want you to ask yourself today. Um, we are not going do you want to die with the people that moved out from Egypt? Or you want to enter the promised land? God has given us a promise. The only thing that is needed is for us to hold on. To hold fast. Winds blows, eh? rain comes, a eh? storm comes, whatever comes, whatever comes. I am holding on to the God that saved me. Yes. Yes. When God eliminated all the Israelites, they all died in the desert. It is because in the mind they were in Egypt, but their body was going to Canaan. So now God was afraid to have a fit a canana. But I mosha. So it's better they all die in the desert. And those that will go there will be people that only saw miracles along the way. Are you hearing me? Look at Joshua. Joshua was a small boy in Caleb. They only saw miracles. And then the Bible gave the clothes they were wearing. As they grew tall, the clothes also went tall. Just thread. Eh? You've been wearing a suit since you were four, three years old, like AJ. When AJ is growing up, when he reaches Kano's age, the suit is Kano's age. When he grows up, reaching Malume, uncle's age, the suit is uncle's age. The, the same suit. The Bible says they never grew old. They never grew old, those suits. I can see what Nelly Gucci or Nelly Ingi, Mara Oxalayo, Nesata, Ali Sutriaon, Gucci Lionel. Now, as they were growing, those boys, they saw suits, clothes growing with them, shoes from size 7 to size 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, your feet are 12. So I'm going to the big size is one. Hey, man. Hey, Pella, these people, they have walked in the desert for 400 years. Don't forget it. Eh? Oh, wait. See, it doesn't go all the way. It doesn't go all the way. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we are serving a big God. It's not he does not know about your situation. He knows. He is just allowing the devil to take advantage of the opportunity. But by the day he's going to say, I'm standing. I want to answer. The devil will know that he is God. Amen. The problem is, Rina, Eish. Can you ask the person that is close to you when? I would see the Lord who me kai. Even I would see the Lord who can. Can you ask the person that is close to you what do you want here today? I've explained almost that's Christianity for you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Are you there? Now in the book of Judges. Chapter 1. Eh? There is somewhere that God wants to take you, but the problem is you don't recognize. Can we go to the book of Judges, chapter 1? Mm. But Baba Sayakanana, they are still going to the promised land, isn't it? They are still on the way. Are you there? Can I read? Now, after the death of Joshua, 
It came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Joshua, you're sorry, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. So Joshua said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me to my allocated territory that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I will likewise go with you to your allocated territory. And Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. And they killed 10,000 men at Bezek. Let us reach there. Hallelujah. Now we are hearing again about the Israelites. Still they are on their way to the promised land. All the leaders and the elders have passed away. I mean those ones whom the message was told to. They were no longer there. So now, even this one, Joshua, the boy who was always seeing miracles and all these kind of things, passed away also. And now, they sat down with the elders. They started thinking. Now, we are here. We are here. We are here. We are here. The problem is, who's going to go first? But Baba Fiti I told you the land that we're going to is Canaan. Isn't it? Okay. Now Apuluswaba Bamudimwaka Basi Pichi Ba Fiti Le Kanan. So no Aba Fita Kanana Mula when they reached Canaan. They started asking each other in themselves, who will go first? Pelauna leba kanana, una le the perizites, the jebusites, leba ngoba woma di to, leba ngoba di to jaus chie. But God said to them, when you reach there, you kill them. Don't stay with them. Don't mix yourself with them. Now, when they have sat down and asked each other, who's gonna go first? Iri Bible ya papa. More about the judges. It is Judah. Judah must go first. Judah was a son of Jacob. But Judah was not the firstborn. Huh? Judah was not the firstborn. The firstborn was Reuben. From Reuben, there comes another one. From another one, there comes another one. Then there comes Judah. Even Simeon was somewhere there up. I don't remember where. But he was not the first one. The Bible says, God said unto them, Tell Judah to go first and conquer the Canaanites. When Judah has conquered the Canaanites, then you can also follow suit and conquer them and possess the land. And somebody will then ask me, Mama, what is Judah? Judah means praise. When you enter the land of Canaan, you must be knowing how to worship. When you enter the land of Canaan that the Lord has given unto you, you must know how to praise God. Eh? You cannot enter the territory of somebody you don't know and you rely, you rely on your own strength. You will never make it. If it is an assignment that God has given unto you, when you enter that land, you enter like this. When you reach there, every Bible, Judah, are with Simeon. Simeon, you win the Piluyamudim. In other words, Piluyamukamadot. The heart of God has been one. 
That's the mother when he, she was giving names to the children. Simeon. Now this heart of God that has been won will be mixed with the praises that are coming from Judah. And as they are going to the promised land, what they have to do is worship. Amen. They have to do what? They have to worship. Can you ask the person that is close to you, which uh, worship song uh, do you know? Hmm? Which one? If you are a Christian, there must be a song that is always in your heart. Hmm? There must be a song that when, if you are driving, when you drive your car, you just feel this song coming out of your belly, singing it through your heart. Sometimes when you are singing, worshiping, like that, you'll just see tears going down your eyes. Why? Because each and every day, my daughter, when you are driving, you are going into the land of foreigners. So you cannot be able to conquer if you don't know how to praise and worship. When you praise and worship God, Oh God, I know you are the king. It's like this thing can be planted in the life of each and every Christian. If you want to enter Canaan, you must be having a spirit of Judah. If you want to enter Canaan, the spirit of Simeon must be upon you. When you want to go and take over, you must be having the spirit of Judah. Learn how to praise God. And somebody will ask me, Mama, what is it that you call praising God? This is praising God. When you go there in front of the king, you don't just go like this. You must bow. Huh? You must look down. You must not face eyeball to eyeball with him. You must look down. And when you look down, you must start singing praises or speaking praises. Speaking about who he is. Speaking about the things he does. Speaking about whatever he's doing. Speaking about all the goodness that is in the land. And everything. Now when you reach there to the king, the only thing that he will do is... Hmm? To show that what you have been doing has been acknowledged. Are you hearing me? So now it happens also. If here in Charis Missionary Church, we can have a hundred people who are saying in my heart, I will only and always worship God. I will only and always speak of his goodness. I will only and always speak of his wonderful works. Tembisa will never remain the same. God wants people who can praise him. That is why when the children of Israel reached the promised land, he said unto them, call for me Judah. Judah. Are achitoma Judah. Are unanonga wo. Bone ba ne ba rifandafa. Boneva never vara o savure mumwe. Boneva never ambazwa ite. Mamzimu a chira o ba ya mangaz. Mamzimu a sad zumba mi ba bone chira. Bone ya wuchiro ba ne mutakaro. Vanyita sunenda ba zone. Dinga zone di chimira mwana mwachi siyamba. Bari romubo na mama kanani saufuna yehova. Dinga orindo furupe na bone mutzimu a chira o. Dinga orindo fu... It's when you are praising God. Hallelujah. Now when you reach your promised land, your promised destination, point number one, never forget to worship God. I repeat, never forget to worship God. When you worship him, people
people that are close to you will start to realize and recognize the kind of God you are serving. Hallelujah. But there is a promise that God has placed for us. Can you tell the person that is, there is a promise that God has played for us? This 2019, we must reach our promise. This 2019, we must get our promises. This 2019, we must get what we are here for. This 2019, we must get our breakthrough. This 2019, we must get our finances. Let me prophesy on somebody that is here. That bondage that you are in is broken today. That disease that you have is broken today. That problem that you have in a workplace is broken today. That thing that is bothering you is broken today. We must enter Canaan. We must enter Canaan. We are entering Canaan today. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we are entering Canaan. Hey, we are entering Canaan. Hey, a land which flows with milk and honey. Hey, this is the promise that God has placed for us. Listen to what happens when they reach there. They say, Who goes first? Are Judah goes first. Judah Awawuti. I cannot go alone. When I finish my own, I come to your own. In other words, all of them, they were allocated places. And they all went, all of them went to their respective places, conquered the places. The problem of others was, if you can go and read the Bible, they went and stayed with the Canaanites. When you reach the curb, finish. You kill all of them. Hmm? When you kill all of them, you take the land. That's how they were conquered. That is why the Bible went on and said, Nago Hainjila. They went They went back and started worshipping the gods of the Canaanites. They forgot. A biggest mistake ever. I don't want you to do this mistake. Because if you are still in Egypt with your heart, you will never get what you are searching for. All those that have Egypt in their heart, they die along the road. They don't reach where they are going. It's better for you to take out the Egypt of your heart and allow God to fill your heart so that you will find the place that God is taking you to suitable for you. And when the place is suitable for you, the only thing that you will be doing is you will be praising him. You will be worshipping him. You will be speaking about his goodness. Most of us, we children of God, we go back to where we come from because the things of the past are still living in us. That is why when you are in the road of going to where God wants you to go, eh? And God allowed this enemy to follow you. You know why? Because God wants to prove to them that you are holding on to him. By they followed the Israelites. They were swallowed by the sea, all of them. Why? Because they wanted them to come back. 
le ge re pholoshitswe ndi khoma nga tshipedi zwe le ge re pholoshitswe re le ntong ya papa ba loyi ba ka situwele u ta ba ri loya ba ri khota khota ni muti muno ba dumelela ka ru ya tsibo re lena le ka se tshentshe ene ka ru ya le tshepa le ka se tshentshe u nyoko ba bontsha u re ene ke na modimo wa uphila hana no modimo ye me u libeletse is watching he want to see somebody that will stand and say god i have a lot of problems but i will never leave your presence god i have this kind of disease but i will never leave your presence god i am jobless but i will never leave your presence god i don't have anything but i will never leave your presence Keep watching Charis TV